Merry Christmas, everybody. Remember, Christmas for us has just begun. It is more than just a single day in a calendar, but in fact, it extends for an entire season. We all know the basics of the Christmas story well. Christ born above the star in the manger in Bethlehem. Mary and Joseph and all the, all the other animals are there present. And then here comes the little baby Jesus. It's almost quaint. Ah, but the story is not quaint. When you understand the implications of the birth of Jesus Christ, you begin to appreciate the story is not cute at all. And we see this powerfully in the next following days in the church's calendar, and we begin to understand why. So after Christmas on the 26th, we celebrate the first Christian martyr, St. Stephen, killed because he proclaimed that Jesus Christ was, was the Messiah. And for that, they stoned him to death. The next day, the 27th, we celebrate one of the apostles, St. John the Beloved, who himself was exiled to the island of Patmos, which is outside of modern-day Turkey. Why was he exiled there? Because he proclaimed that Jesus Christ was the true King now, born into this world. Next day, we celebrate today, we celebrate on 28th, the Holy Innocents who were slaughtered in the city of Bethlehem by King Herod. Why? Why, was he, why did he slaughter all the little kids? Because for Herod, the birth of Jesus Christ threatened his power. Because if a new king was born, then he would have to set aside his own kingship. And then tomorrow, on the 29th, we celebrate St. Thomas Becket, an English martyr who in the 12th century dared to defy the king of England, Henry II. Why? Because Thomas Becket told the king, the most powerful man probably, one of the most powerful men in Europe at that time, he says, you do not have power over the church which Christ established. Christ is our king, not you. Do you begin to see a pattern? Christ has been born. He is the true King, the Messiah. In fact, He is God in the flesh. If therefore Christ is King now, all other false claimants to the throne of our lives must lay low and bow down before Him. All other kings, principalities, and powers no longer rule over us. And even myself, if I want to make the baby Jesus my King, I no longer come first. And that is what makes Christianity so threatening for many. Because it's no longer I who live now, but rather Christ who must reign in my life. And I must set aside my pride and my ego and kneel before the newborn King, 